What's up guys? Rubicon Vale here. I am gonna do some triple triad tournament for you guys today. Uh, it's the first time for me doing this, but I have played quite a bit of triple triad and I kind of want to share some stuff I do with what decks I use. Less of a tutorial, more of a just how I play. Uh, I might do really bad. I haven't done this in a little bit, but this might go pretty good too. So we'll see how it goes. If you've never done Triple Triad, I think it's a really fun thing to do in Final Fantasy XIV. It comes from Final Fantasy VIII. I loved it in VIII. I love it here. Uh, there's a few ways you can do the tournament. You start here with the Gold Saucer. Uh, and then... I don't want to talk to you. And then you want to go to um, Beauty Finder. Saucer Triple Triad Battle Hall. To get into it. Nothing special. You're gonna want to have some decks already made. And the best thing to do. I don't like playing other people. Uh, I have reasons for that. But um, we got four NPCs here that work for the tournament. I like to focus on the big dog. Lording. Lording. Uh, let's look at my decks here. So I have five decks that I use. Some get more use than others. A lot of these have to do with what NPC I'm playing and the rules that are enforced. Uh, this one, I play with the most. That's a Squall 8 deck. Partially because I love Squall. I think he's a good anchor card. And when I say anchor card, I mean a 5-star card. I guess a 4-star card. It's 5s. Uh, that are really, really good to place somewhere on the board, typically in a corner, and then work your way out from there. So I find that this deck works really well against a lot of NPC opponents. Uh, I start typically with Squall in the top left corner, and then I go down. Sometimes I'll play Sails south of him, or I will um, play it to the right of Squall. And it really just kind of depends on the situation. Somebody might play a card right below Squall, and then I play a Stinian just below that and try to take it. This works good for a lot of stuff, but sometimes I get uh, beat on... Uh, Plus decks, so I have a special deck for that one. The 187, haha, it's a joke. Kill them, kill them all. Uh, but this one's got a lot of ones, eights, and sevens in it uh, because sometimes you may want to play something that has uh, reverse rules, and uh, the ones do really good in that. Or if you've got like somebody who mixes the rules up, you got some good big dogs numbers, the eights and sevens, but you also have the ones. So this, this is kind of like a wild card one. Uh, Ascension, of course, if you're playing somebody that's got Ascension rule, these are just people who've got two deals in the corners to uh, up, the, uh, up the numbers as the Ascension rule goes up. Plus, uh, this is a great deck when you're playing somebody with plus rules. I like this one. My anchor is the Onion Knight, and I will play this one in the top right, whereas Squall I'll usually play in the top left, and then work my way out from there. It kind of has the same thing as the Squall one, but what you'll notice is pairs of eights on all of these. Uh, and then the threes and twos, that's so I have a lot of room to um, to do that plus stuff. And then finally, reverse, reverse. Uh, these have a lot of ones, twos, and threes on it. This, this is a great deck for when you're playing reverse. I hardly lose with this one. But let's see what we do here. Um, let's go just straight into it. I did a couple warm-ups on another NPC before I got into this, but I'm just going to go right into the turn. Now, again, I don't have, like, hard and set rules. It depends on what I'm doing at the time or what the rule set is I'm playing or how I'm feeling. There are some things I do more often than not, and I'll try to call them out as I do it. Again, this is less of a tutorial, more of just how I play, but it's it's got some nuggets of truth in there, too. Uh, there's no regional rules here. It's just roulette. So this is just going to be wild. So because it's just going to be crazy, I'm always going to pick the Squall 8 deck. It's my best deck. I think if I do recommend it, it probably actually gives me these cards. Uh, recommend it is actually not bad to do, but once you've got a grasp on what you're going for and you have an idea of how you want to play the board, uh, I would suggest making use of that. So I'm going to do that one, but it may not even play that one. It may just give me a random set of stuff. Uh, random rules here, order and plus. So I am dealing with the plus on this one. Uh, because it's in order I'm gonna do a just take all because I can't necessarily say oh well let me let me play defensively there may be a time and place for that 
but in this situation, I want to just take. So I'm going to just take. Here's Squall in that top left corner. I would play this one here because my rule on that is he can't take this card. There's nothing he can do other than in a plus situation for him to take this card. Yes, I could play the Stinian here uh, and win this card, but it leaves me super exposed. Although, leaving two numbers exposed is better than leaving one number exposed because then they take one number and then you can't do anything. The plus may kill me on this, because they've got me there in the middle. I'm going to do the best I can to stop that. Yep. So we started with a draw on that one because of the plus rule. Now, the plus rule may not happen throughout the whole tournament. I'm always going to pick that Squall 8, but look, my rules have changed. Now, should I have played a winner-take-all? Maybe. On that last one. Fallen Ace. Uh, if you're not familiar with that rule, that means the ones will beat aces. Uh, but since we're Chaos, which means if we pick anything, I'm going to take a winner-take-all. And when I say that, I mean I'm just going to play to beat cards. I'm not, I'm not trying to um, get super um, defensive. But they hurt me in the end. Oh yeah, this is terrible. This is not this is not a tutorial. Same in order. Uh, order again, it's going to play my cards in the order. I do have my card set in a specific order. I play this, my anchor card first so it, I can set that anchor and then I'll play around it. The reason is a lot of cards will uh, play south of you. Uh, a lot of opponents will play south of you. So uh, Astinian is next and then you still can kind of come from whatever other here. That worked out in my favor. Maybe we'll get on a roll here. Not how I want to start my turn in for they uh, drawn a loss. You can uh, win. By win, I mean get your name on the board. A couple of draws typically. Loss probably won't get me on the board. This is Chaos Plus. Uh, there is no reason for me to defensively Chaos situation. Unless you've just got something that... Uh... Something that uh, is just not going to work. Rowena Cup Classic, I think, is the hardest of the tournaments. See, it gave me Reverse. Uh, I didn't have a chance to pick what cards I want on that. That's the uh, that's the the difficulty here. I do have a lot of low numbers on these cards, though, so it's not uh, it's not not a total loss. these ones that cannot come back and take. And hopefully it doesn't have a low number up top. There we go. Again, reverse is playing the low numbers. Tricky with that rule. Gotta always watch those rules. 
three open, that means it shows three of the cards. You can only see three of my cards. I don't trust the NPCs anyway. I figure computers already know what you're doing. Fallen Ace in this situation could be tricky because I got the middle ace. I still want to play it though because I don't know what's going on here. And the computer sometimes doesn't make the best choice for playing cards. I don't know why. It's almost like you throw it sometimes. Plus roll here. Take. Too bad no plus roll, huh? A lot of draws today. Now here's reverse. A little tricky there. I think I'm gonna go similar strategy as the last. Kinda take. That one had kind of a two-fold. In the middle, I was able to play the card that took the top middle card, but also protects me from getting taken. It didn't give me double exposure. If I had played it in the bottom left, I would have had the top card and the bottom card as exposure. So that's a kind of one of those hard and fast rules that sometimes gets bent, but you want to... It's kind of like on uh, when you do blackjack. You know, like, you always hit on certain numbers, even when you're like, uh, you know, you want to go with your gut sometimes. Going with your gut is good, but the hard and fast rule is don't give yourself too much exposure. Uh, three open, dissension. That means these type of cards will go lower. It's really easier to take. So now I've got an eight and a two here. I'll go a little different route with this one. See, this prevents exposure. Even if I play it here, it's like, eh, you know what? But it takes this card and prevents exposure. See, now I'm two up. Ah, uh, but you got me on that one. It's okay. I gave myself enough breathing room. Reverse came up. It's reverse order. What I'm going to do here is there's almost no hope. So I'm going to play this on the right side. See, I normally play him up here because it's reverse. We're coming from the opposite angle. This also gives me room to catch him back. Now in this situation, I, this is a good one because I'm able to take this with the A. If I wasn't able to, I would definitely play it up here because taking is better than nothing. In order in chaos, and this is really probably how I messed up on that first or second game. In order in chaos, you almost just have to take it because you're limited to the rules that you've got or limited to the plays that you have. Take is just one exposure there. Voila. Colibri. I'll open Ascension. Ascension meaning those will grow. If I played the Ascension deck, great. But again, we don't know the rule set in this one. Rowing a classic fixes two rules. So I don't know what the expectation is. This is now a uh, 10. I'm going to play... I'll open attention. Yeah, I'm, I'll play it defensively still. Take this side. Now I'll take it. 
as we still smite the open here with the take. I can play here to limit exposure. Now I know what he's got, so he's not going to really do anything to me. But if this was blank, if I had no idea what this behemoth card was, I would play here to limit the exposure. There's, there's, I guess it's the same exposure, but uh, it's a, it gets a little scary when you have left and right cards. It, 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 it again is almost like gut feeling, but. You want as least uh, the least number of cards exposed. You don't want to sit in a corner or have a corner open with two cards and they get classified. Plus and same, this is this is a deadly. This one is very tough. In a plus same situation, especially in the plus, you almost really want to play the same row that it's on. Because you just don't want to open up a lot of crap. I'm going to try that. They burn me. You start playing stuff that's opposite and giving room. Like I play something here and give room. Now I'm starting to, you know, eventually the board dries up. There's less place to play. But by playing here, that gives this and this. Um, it gives, it's, it starts to get real weird. I'm going to try uh, below. This isn't really a take. This may actually uh, burn me up here. So got this. Yeah, and I think that's what it is. That's a ace is here. That one in my back pocket. Oh, got that. Oh, that's terrible. That's terrible. It's terrible how they did me like that. Uh. I'm going to get two cards back, but it's not going to be enough uh, because of the um, same rule which I was not expecting at all. That's a terrible play. Plus three open, the plus is going to be scary again. He plays the top though, so definitely play in the top. That's the thing with the, the Van Darnus card. They will usually, the NPC, will usually play up top, bottom. Sometimes they'll play it in the middle. Usually I don't see it too many other times. Uh, so I'm going to play here probably. Because I don't want. Yeah, I had the plus. That's not really what I was going for. You start giving more corners. Like, I would have had this, and then the NPC would have had this corner and this corner do something. Now, when you look at it, you say, okay, for plus, this is probably the optimal corner because you have the chance of a plus, which I don't think I can pull off. But you also limit your exposure by not playing down here and causing more plus, you know, areas that plus. And now I know what his last card is, so there's not a whole lot that he gives me here. Uh, that gets me one up here. He'll take this one, but I'm still on top. Plus chaos. So here we go. The plus rule, it's going to probably screw me at some point. But the chaos, I usually take that to mean you just need to take cards. At this point, just take cards. I'm going to give myself a double exposure here with a six and one, just because it gives me a warm fuzzy that I can come back and pick it up later. Uh, here, there's not a whole lot I can do, so I'll play a little bit. Limits my exposure, even though it's a three. Best choice. If it was gotten here, not much I could have done. Uh, but see, the uh, like I said, there's not a whole lot you can do with a plus chaos. It's one of those you can do, you can do almost anything to limit the exposure. But if he's just got that right card, 
there's not a whole lot you can do. So, I also don't mind if people go back and say, like, you should have played this, you should have played this. I don't mind getting better. I'm not an expert at this. Uh, at the same time, though, I do find Triple Triad a lot of fun. All open, Dissension. Uh, this I'm going to play like normal. start playing too defensively uh, you won't catch any cards so that's my fear with chaos or order full sets and that one I played here instead in the corner I know that goes against my exposure rule but I knew what cards he has I know he can't take it really this is the only double nine cards it's a really good most part uh, but here is probably more the exposure win And that ace is almost like a brick wall, unless you've got a plus rule, a same rule, or a fallen ace. Order same. So it's order, I'm gonna just take. Chaos Ascension, uh, first play, take my corner. And to me, this is just take, and if you have to play defensively. Um, yeah, here, because he'll play Pandarnas here. Huh. Got tricked. Not doing a lot of take. The Van Darnus here's uh, didn't have Van Darnus. Just told four more chaos reverse. Remember that reverse rule that has screwed me over plenty of times. Because uh, it's chaos, I have to play defensively with that first card. Take here, I can only play defensively. Not terrible. Uh, here is something. That's, that's kind of an exposure thing. With reverse, it's more about, like, can you set the other player up to show their big moves? All open, sudden death. This is just play smart. Ends it smart. And when you've got normal rule sets, and he's got the same set of cards, and this whole... Squall and then my Yusail and then coming back cleaning up with Spinion. This is typically how it goes. Gives me luck. Now here's the exposure part. Here's a great example of exposure. Here's three red cards and a blue card. Where would I want to play my card? Unless I can straight up take these cards or one or the other and only give one exposure here. I'll play down here. He can't take his own cards. Red 
first. We have Sudden Death Ascension. Um, I, can't, I can't take him here. One good thing with Ascension, if you're playing an opponent that has Ascension rules, usually they will be full of these kind of cards that have the Ascension. You want to take those cards as quickly as possible. Because the more cards he plays, or you play, you can start Ascend. So I would play like a Squall or something to take this quick. But I'm not going to do that because I don't, I don't need to. He's not going to play a bunch of Ascension cards just yet. Well, let's see here. Uh, we'll just go to like. I'll go with that, and then I'm going to expose myself on two lands. The reason is because I can get back up. There you go. I knew he didn't have any cards with a nine on top. You start to learn the opponent's card. Fortunately, we are on the last, the last play. I've remembered. Dissension Fallen Ace. Fallen Ace means my aces can be taken with one. Maybe he'll do it. And I've been paying that some attention. Negative one, that Dissension. I think this is the only card that has that up. Dissension, Dissension. Well, it's gonna happen. It's last play. I do. I'm not gonna be on the board anyway. It's a back and forth here, and I have two cards. The way part of the reason I play those is because I can take that, but also this gives me an eight eight here, so my bottom is solid. I don't really need. It. But at least we ended on a win. Another Colibri card there. Not rematch. All of them are done at this time. How did we do? Yeah, only 12 wins, 13, 40. That's not going to be enough points to do much. Let's go check the board. No. Just abandon the deck and get out of here. We'll check the boards and see. Uh, my comment about the uh, Triple Triad tournament and why I like NPCs, I find there's probably a lot of win trading going on. I'm not, I don't know anything about those 20 people. But there's, I think people use their alt to win trade. So I'm not in it to get some big dog points. The fact that I play the tournament uh, will mean I'll get a couple of uh, platinum packs to see what happens. Yeah. But that is it for this video. Um, I think I may do some in the future with uh, me collecting cards. I don't quite have them all yet. Let's see my card list briefly. I have 194. There's quite a few that I have left to get. I do like to use um, the name of the site is... XIV triad.com. Let's see here. I'm going to go to the website and give it to you. I do have a triple triad site that I really like to use. Um, FFXIV triad.com. Uh, it's got a pretty neat layout, but what I like is I can kind of check off which cards that I've gotten. It tells me what NPCs. When things used to be on a timer, it was great. Timer stuff. There you go. Guys, thank you for watching. Uh, I plan on doing a few more Triple Triad videos for you guys in the future. So uh, look forward to them. And if you like this, leave me a comment uh, or ask me to do some other stuff. I don't mind. And some mini tutorials. Again, I'm not an expert, but I like to play. So any tips I can share, I'd love to share them with you. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.